Hello, and welcome okay. to the show and tell. We've got a show and tell. We need to do Why? <laughs> oh, wait, it's backwards. Yeah, uh, we have one. Because we love you. No, uh, we're going to have a, a fun, short show and tell so far. Uh, I don't know. You yeah. can just Let's mute your mic or you're not on <laughs> you're yeah. here. So. All right. Check out for it. Okay. So you're um, going to give us an update on, um, you have a couple projects going on. Uh, what's up? Yeah. So the I halted the helicopter project to, because it uses the same board design as the balloon. So I stopped working on that for now to focus on the balloon, because that's uh, going to, we're going to launch in the beginning of September. So um, Rick, who sent me the radio modules, he recently sent me this one. It has like a FTDI chip on the back built in. Oh, that's nice. And then it has the SMA connectors in the front. I got and um, a new updated version of this board. Yeah, shieldy version. Yeah, it's just like it has a I think some updated silk screen and stuff. But um, the thing is, I went I have a pretty good electronics store near me, but then I picked up a coax cable. It's the only one they had, and it's too big, yeah, so I had to or order it from DigiKey, and it says it's in the U.S. US UPS distribu distribution center, which is actually just down the street, but they don't let you go and pick it up. Oh so no. I have to wait till Monday for them to drive half a mile to my house. It sounds like the things that house. we deal with every day here. <laughs> so I have some like a unique antenna called a clover leaf antenna. It's like has these uh, like precisely. Oh yeah. The metal, and they have to saw them onto the cable because the cable like, gives the whole thing rigidity. Okay. I can't finish that until I get the cable. It's only like 12 inches long, but I've been waiting for a couple days. Yeah, it's funny. You know, Radio Shack used to actually carry that stuff because it was a radio shack. <laughs> but they don't anymore. And they haven't probably for a decade or two decades. They used to actually carry like... like well, we're carrying our Arduinos now. Yeah. yeah, we got Arduino. That's a good start. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well. Okay. So what's going to be? What's the next yeah. milestone? What's the next thing that you that you need to do? Well, once I get the coax cable, I can finish my antennas, and then test them. And I'm going to get a new revision of this board because I actually, I can show it to you guys. So this board is the one I've been working on. It's uh -huh. really small, and um, there's the GPS antenna that I ended up putting the. Um, antenna feed through a via, which is not a good idea. Oh, uh, yeah. So that, I don't know, I think it's just the way I laid it out. But I had an idea, what I'd do is I'd put the antenna on the backside so that it looks like the antenna is radiating down, but then I'd mount it upside down mm -hmm. so the antenna goes through the board, and then I could drill holes or cut a slot in the board. That's okay. a good idea. Yeah. So I'll see how that works out. Okay. Well, keep stopping in. We're, this is a cool project. I like that we get this story yeah. that, that's been going on. Okay. It's slow progress. Okay. Hey, it's, it's always slow. Yeah. It's faster than You should see our backlog of projects. We have Same projects thing. that are like five years old. Yeah. It's so depressing. Five it's years. We've had that many projects. Yeah. I've done projects. Okay, okay, so we're going to go to Becky, and then we're going to go to Andy, because Becky is actually tuning in live. Live. Um, well, this from is not her, live. From her, <laughs> well, yeah, but this is from her EL workshop. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, there you there are. We're on. We're on a 4G connection, so if we cut out, it's that. Okay. Tell us what's going on, yeah. Beck. Okay, so we're having an EL wire workshop at, here at the Madagascar Institute in Brooklyn, just across the river from you guys. And we have three lovely class participants here working hard on their first ever EL projects, right? None of you have done this before. Never before. And so maybe we can quickly go around and they can show you their projects. Yeah. Okay, great. Do you want to introduce one. yourself and say what you are working on? Let's see if we can get you real quick. I am. You can't really see our video there. too well. Yeah. yeah, okay, oh. there you go. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm doing a helmet. I'm making it illuminate. Do you want to light it up real quick? Sure. So she's using some glue, and we're doing a couple different things. Some people are sewing, some people are gluing, depending on what they brought to EL wire to, and so she added this pink EL wire to her bicycle helmet. Okay. And she's in the process of making it there. Do you see it glowing? Nice. That's cool. Quite nice. Okay. Moving right along. Kelly, you want to show what you got? 
Yeah, um, I'm going to uh, make this extra stitch on both sides of the shirt. That will be... Uh, Do you want to light it up real quick? Sure. That will be uh, sound activated. Yeah, she's so using the sound activated inverter. Oh, so when I uh, oh. uh, like to dance, I c it'll activate to uh, whatever the music is playing. The other guy. Hello. Oh. Well, kind of hard to show unless you wear it. Hello. Do you have both of them on? Oh, it's, is it green and yellow? It's aqua. Oh, okay. Yeah. Her connection is a little shaky. Her her outfit got stage fright. It got camera shy. Oh, yeah. There it goes. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That that happens. This is while you're still working on them. Um, is this for um? Is this for uh like going to parties or like an art event or what? What's the yeah, expected? For, uh, Going out, going out to dancing and stuff, so. Oh, cool. Going to what? Dancing and stuff. Oh, yeah. With music, so, but those are activated. But. Yeah, it is. It's kind of like, you slide your slider to the other side. Yeah, it's, it's max now. All right, we're going to have to do some troubleshooting on her project. Oh, no. Okay, we're going to work by the way. Live demos. Okay, maybe we'll come over here to Corey. She's also doing a purse. She's got two projects, quite ambitious. Wow. Corey said he's a little camera shy, but we okay. can talk about Hold up your project. What's your project, Corey? Don't ask me any questions. He's got an extensive don't kill me light on a bike bag. Oh, cool. Oh, that's nice. That's really bright. Anything for to get people's attention. Uh, so that like sits on the, on the rack, right? On the back of your bike? Yeah. yeah. So you can and get He's got like two strands like going around. That's cool. Okay, great. So he's sewing. I wouldn't have pegged the two ladies to not. Nope. Nope. For gluing and sewing, and I'm surprised that the dude is doing the most sewing. So we're working <laughs> on our projects here and having a good time. Yeah, okay, cool. And I'm happy to check in with you. It's always lovely. Very cool. And okay. Becky, will there be information later for people who want to maybe do their own workshop one day or see what you've done or. Yeah, so I'm going to make sure that we take pictures of what we're working on here. And then um, I'm also working on a little guide in the tutorial system on running your own EL workshop. It, it outlines all of the extra stuff you might want to supply for your students. So um, I got these guys uh, a little piece of glue, some toothpicks to spread it, some thread to sew on, and some needles, and a little bit of extra heat shrink, and some EL splitter. So I have all that, I'll have all that info up next week about um, what you might need to make it easy for you to run your own EL wire workshop. Okay. Well, very cool. And uh, good luck with the rest of your projects, guys. They look great. Awesome. Bye bye. Okay. okay. And now we're going to go over to Later. Andy. All right, okay. Andy at Mission Control here. Are you landing the? Um, are you landing the Mars? The <laughs> Mars Curiosity here. This is the Curiosity okay. headquarters. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Don't land yet? Okay, la land now. No, it's tomorrow <laughs> night at 11:30. It's landing. I think we should walk. <laughs> That's for the the rover. That's how it knows when to go. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I um, I just was um gonna briefly show off the um your guys distro. Okay. Uh, I, I, Great. Can you um, do that in like twenty minutes and we'll go get some coffee on the show <laughs> and you can just take over? Yeah. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> outsource this. Okay. Show us but what you got. But you, tell you what, you guys, it came out yesterday and yeah. um, it's everything's running really well. Let me um go ahead and bring up the. Uh, let me bring up a camera here. That's oh. me. Wrong one. Okay. Here. Oh. Wrong camera. There we go. Right camera. Okay. Okay. What we got here is I actually also got all the um, I C um, I squared C stuff up and running too on it. Great. And I actually have a um, that would be one of your breakouts. Um, the old um, that B M P um, eighty five. Oh, cool. And that's actually, um, this particular version there is actually the version one of your, that's like very, that's old. <laughs> yeah, that works great with, because this is 3.3 .3 Logic, so it's it's totally. It's perfect for it. Yeah. 
Yeah. I had no, I just didn't want to carry two versions, one five and one three. So that's why we now have the the three and five. It's a bit bigger, but you know. Well, I, I I do like the three and five because then you can just you can use it for whatever project you want. So okay. that's actually well, so you've got your pie, you've got the cobbler, you got the BMP, and you looks like you've got a little display there. I got the three and a half inch um, display going there too. That's working very well. I also have a um, wireless keyboard hooked to it. That's okay. actually a combo. That's a Logitech um, just like yeah, a yeah, combo yeah. Um, thing. Works real well. Um, I've um, Experimented with some of the real talk um, um, dongles, and I've gotten several of them working. So, oh, great. Um, for for what? For for the Wi-Fi dongle. Yeah, that's the that's the stuff that I added into the kernel. We're actually we're actually also trying out a whole bunch of different little mini dongles, trying to find the best one with the best range. Yeah, and they're very yeah, they can be very very finicky. I've noticed. They're, In fact, I just lost one just as I was talking to you guys, and I was trying to get it back up again. <laughs> Yeah, we found one that it stayed up for a couple hours, and uh, you know the thing is also you, you don't want it to draw too much power because it can blow the small fuse on the Pi. So it's like a balancing act of like you want to be sensitive but not use so much power that it deactivates itself. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I guess um, my question is, we put a lot of time in it because we wanted people to be able to quickly do all this stuff uh, relatively quick. Have you ever tried to do stuff with the Pi before this? And now that you're using this, is it easier to use this distro versus trying to set up all the stuff without it? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty experienced in, in um, just in Linux in general. That's kind of where my background came from um, years ago. So, um, but I did notice, can you guys, uh, are you guys picking up that beeping in the background or no? Yeah, we hear it. Yeah, it was not a deal. Okay, so that's cool. Um, yeah, so it was it was um, very easy to install it. I, I was probably had you guys um, going um, your distro up and going in you know less than an hour, that's and right. you know all the uh, all the other um, and getting that component going. I probably did that in another hour, getting it all. Did you use C or Python to to talk to the or or shell to talk? Um, to this is actually all written in C. Okay. We're thinking okay. of, of writing libraries for all the, the breakouts, but we're thinking of sticking with Python for a variety of reasons, although, you know, C has benefits as well. Yeah, I mainly moved to that because I was able to find a lot of stuff already existing that was out there. Um, yeah. You know, um, so it was very easy for me to, to grab what I needed and then um, put it together to to um, actually talk to that. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, so, this is our uh, first. This is our first release. It's like point one, and this is my first making a Linux image. And um, it actually took me a while, even though it's like, oh, there's only like six things in it. It actually matters what order you do them in, because I um, I brick the pie a couple times if you if you don't do the kernel updates and the firmware updates in the right order. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to have it as an image. Yeah. Um, right. I'm I'm actually also like really good at Linux, but. Um, you know, it, because you have to cross compile, everything just takes so much longer because you have to compile on like an Ubuntu box and then move the files over. It's not as easy to compile new modules because you can't do it on the Pi. I mean, you right. could, but not really. Yeah, it's a, it, um, it's very well done. I mean, that's I mean, you'd never be able to tell that that was your first time doing it. Oh okay. yeah, well, I, it's yeah, awesome. Not a lot, not a lot going on there. It's based, it's based very heavily on, um, on their distro. I only, I only want to add the things, and there's, there's a lot more coming. Um, this is like only my trial. Uh, there's, there's going to be future stuff that will make it really clear why we're doing it as an image and not as a how-to. But uh, it's not out yet, so I can't talk about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you see anything that you're like, hey, can you add this? Or, you know, like something that you notice. Uh, right. Shoot email to support at Adafruit. And yeah. Then, yeah, I mean, an automatic resize for the SD card might be a good idea. Uh, it's it's still oh, I have it automatically do it. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. Um, we're gonna be carrying eight or a sixteen gig card, so yeah, we might we might do that. that's a good suggestion. Maybe we'll write that down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Andy. We um, had Dan tune in, and we have about ten minutes left, so I'm gonna hop over to him. Do you have anything else before we go to to Dan, or is that? No, it? that's good. I just jumped on because I noticed you guys are running a little short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we have like twelve people, and then sometimes we just have a couple. That's the nature of the summer okay. show and tells. Okay, we're gonna hop over to Dan, and thank you again, Andy, for trying out our thank distro. Thank you. Okay, Dan, how's it going? Hello. Hi. Wow. First time here. This okay. is exciting. Yeah. What's the project. Um, 
Yes, uh, I'm sitting inside it right now. No, like what if it's like wooden? Like it looks like it's like some sort of seed route of okay, box. I should go the other way. Project, show us your Dan. <laughs> I'm working on it. Here we go. Okay, so first I'll back up a bit without disconnecting myself. Um, you see the cube back there? It's yeah. A cube. Yes. So up on the top, up, up on the top here, we have our Adafruit motor shield. Yes. And two of those motors. Just okay, like uh, in the drawbot. Okay. And down there, that's my current uh, centerpiece. Okay. And by um, with the software I've got, I can move that around to pretty much any point inside the cube. Okay, cool. Um, think, like drawing and stuff. What's what's the? The first goal is to get a little um, a claw on there, and I want to pick up Lego blocks and build a house. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, so and print, uh, also, like if, a 3D if, printer. <laughs> Lego printer. Yeah, it would be a great 3D printer. Um, yeah. Um, I was, I'm also thinking about putting a funnel with colored sand and doing mandalas. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, I, I want to really take advantage of the 3D-ness of it. I have already done a 2D plotter. So this, this gives me a drawing machine that I can lift a pen up. And that's nice. Yeah. I don't have that in the drawbot. Yeah. But, um, but I'm really looking to take full use of the, the whole space. I think 3D light painting could be really cool, like a bright LED and a long yeah. exposure, and you won't see the, the chassis, but it'll be cool because it'll be 3D. I agree. I, um, I think you'll actually be able to see the 3D-ness of it. Uh, I've, I'm going to a festival in September where I'm bringing this along, and if I could do the light painting while the people are moving around it, on a long exposure, that might be very nice. Yeah. That's cool. So yeah. I'm going to give you a bad idea. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so when I was younger, there was this stuff that you could pour into water and make little sandcastles underwater, and it would kind of stick together, and it, you could make, you know, a full, like, 3D scene in, yeah, a, yeah, in yeah. a fish tank. That might be something interesting, a giant tank of water, find out what that substance is, and use that to make a, a huge underwater sculpture. Because you have 3D, you could do that. I think that might be difficult to get up to an event in September. Remember, <laughs> this is a bad idea. Okay. <laughs> well, um, let me just put it out there for all the all the viewers. If uh, if one of you has a good idea for a uh, for how to build that grippy claw, let me know. Because okay. uh, I've yeah. got access oh. to a 3D printer, but I haven't had a chance to design anything yet. There is a um, I posted up a open source 3D claw on the Adafruit blog. Just go to the blog and keep uh, hitting previous. Yeah. It was like mm -hmm. last Sunday night. Okay. Yeah, it's a really it's cool a hydraulic call. call. Yeah, and it's an open source one, and there's a bunch of people who built them. It's for underwater ro uh, roads, so. Yeah, oh, cool, cool. I'll have to check that out. Okay. All right. Let um, me say how much I admire what, you, what you've got going there. I, I, I live for the day when I can, uh, I can do this professionally like you are. Awesome. It's, uh, it's, a lot of makers have gone from um, learning about like making stuff to having it as a hobby, starting a small business and then eventually quitting their jobs and just doing it full time. Yeah. There's a whole collection of people. Um, uh, as you do stuff, um, document it, uh, send us links, and we'd love to post about, yeah, it. Post about and, it. And a lot of people will probably start asking you, hey, I, you know, I kind of want to buy one of those, or could you do consulting? You know, we want to have one of these at our event or something. Oh, well, thank you. That's exactly where I'm at right now, and uh, I, I'd love to collaborate with you more later about it. Yeah. Okay, great. And thank you for using the Adafruit Motor Shields. Yay. Well, they're, they're, they're perfect. They were so simple. Um, I wrote my own version of the firmware because I didn't need. I, I'm bit banging all the way through. Yeah. But um, but it's it's fantastic. And okay, great. Okay, awesome. Okay. That's a fun show. We'll that worked out. That, that five, worked out perfect. Five or six guests. Okay, thank you, Ethan. Becky's not here, but we'll thank her anyways. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Andy. We'll see everybody on Ask an Engineer in just a couple minutes. We're gonna I'm get gonna, set up. Gonna get more water. And uh, Dan, when you're done with your project, come back, Ethan, as you get um, your UPS delivery and all your stuff worked yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> And Andy, keep on going on with cool stuff with the Raspberry Pi. Let us know if you try out more stuff that works yeah. with it or doesn't work. I'm glad it. somebody else tested the iSports. Actually, I didn't fully test it, so I'm glad someone did it. <laughs> All right, and we'll see everybody soon.